There's, there's one you got now. Oh god. Go. oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! I got one of the big ones! I got one of the big ones! I got one of the big ones, bro! You getting the goods tied on or what? You getting her dialed here. You excited? Very. Is it gonna happen? I think it's gonna happen. I don't know what's happening, but you think, it's, you think it's gonna happen, huh? It's gonna happen. Okay. How's it going, folks? Welcome back to another episode of Fisher Flight. Today, well, John and I, we're just chilling at the house. We're like, dude, let's go fishing. We haven't been fishing in such a long time. Let's go fishing. I think what we're going to end up doing is kind of like a uh, quick little 30 minute. We don't have like a ton of time today. We've got a bunch of other stuff planned, but we want to catch some fish. So we're going to do a 30 minute 1v1 bass fishing challenge at the pond in my backyard using one of the juiciest worms. One of the juiciest worms on the market. This is the Exo Ribbon 7 inch. We've been using it. Honestly, we've used it, I think, the past two times we fished my pond, and it has straight slapped. Like, I went there by myself, and I think I caught, like, 15 fish in, like, an hour. Like, the thing absolutely murks, and uh, and that's what we're going to be using today. But if you guys want the XO Ribbon, go to the link down below. Go to shopcarls.com. That is a place where we get all the fishing gear. Me, the rest of the Guggen Squad, they are the plug for all things fishing. So if you're a fisherman, and you're in the need of gear, which is pretty much every single fisherman, instead of going to the store and looking at all the trillions of different products and, you know, talking to the employees that probably don't know what they're doing, you go to shopcarls.com the link down below and everything on the site is straight fire like i said pretty much everything that i use fishing related rods reels lines lures i get them all at shopcarls.com big shout out to shopcarls.com for sponsoring today's video you ready hope you're ready to get clapped Ooh, dang dang dude that was a little that was a little harsh man it was it just seemed like you got a little bit a little too excited when you said that anyways we're headed down the pond. We made it. Grab the old rod out of the warthog. I'm gonna get freshy on. This one, uh, this was from when I was dangling by myself and I clapped. Let's get a freshy on here. Don't, don't cast yet, Johnny. We gotta start the clock. All right. Let me, let me get rigged. Let me get hashtag rigged. Rip. Shoo. Straight fire, baby. You throwing red too, Johnny? Well, you're throwing weightless, huh? So he's going weightless. I'm going with the old T rig. It's, a, it's freaking windier than crap out here, so I think I made the right decision here, but we'll see. Should rig it old Texas rigged. This is hands down the bass's favorite snack in this pond. I've caught more fish on this bait. This and the lunker log are probably about neck and neck with most fish. Boom. All right. All right, Johnny, we're going to start the clock here. All right, go 30 minutes. You guys can see that and go. All right, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, okay, okay. I'll stay down. No, 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 no. I'll stay down here. I'll stay down here. All right, so the goal is to catch as many fish as you possibly can in 30 minutes. Like I said, John's going with the weightless, more finesse spinning rod approach. I'm going with the heavy rod and the old Texas rig, something that'll get down to the bottom a little bit better. But the sun is out and it is freaking windy out here. You guys can't even really hear it right here because I'm like protected. If you go where John's all the way down there, it's absolutely ripping. So I don't know how his little weightless worm is going to sink. He thinks it will, but it'll be a slow fall. It's not going to not sink. I think I've got the advantage here. I just need to get it uh, I need to get my cast all the way out to the stock here. That feeder out there, I think that, that feeder's probably out of feed. Probably should refill that soon. But either way, that dock still creates some uh, shade for the bass. So I still think there's gonna be fish there, but definitely out of feed. Probably should stock that up today. All right, I'm, oh no, John's hooked up. Oh no, oh, he has a fish. Let's see if he lands it. Oh no, he landed it. Criminy, all right. One zero, boys, we're going in the bushes. We're not taking the L here on the old, on my own pond here. I'm going over here. I haven't really fished over here much, maybe one time, but let's see, is there anything, anything look good from here? It looks a lot deeper right here, that's for sure. We've got 21 minutes left. So we're about a little over eight minutes deep. John one, me zero. Boom, that was a good cast though. I want, I wish I could fish down there. That's the juice, but this might have some fish too. Maybe the fish are kind of getting ready to chill for winter or something, and maybe they're going a little bit deeper. Oh, 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 missed one. No, oh no. I didn't bring the worms, it broke it. I think we're still good, or I think we're still good though. It just ripped the head off. Oh man, it felt, that felt kind of small. That honestly could have been a little bluegill. I'm not really sure. Rig this guy back on there. That was a good sign though. Got a bite. He just pecked at it though. I don't know how big he was. Throw right back down there off this ledge. What was that all about? Took the dub. I'm not surprised. I'm cheeks. Palm was kind of cheeks though, huh? Palm was a little bit rough today. 
figured, I don't know if it's the cold or, I mean, we've clapped on that worm so much, I feel like it's the cold. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think so too. I think so. There's your 30 minute challenge. Kind of disappointing, sorry about that, we tried. But we did kind of have a quick idea. Well one, like I was talking about earlier, we need to refill the fish feeder. So what we could do is we need to go actually go check on the chickens for one. Grab the feed that's down by the shop, come back here, jump in the dangle dinghy, put the feed in there. While we're already on the dangle dinghy, we might as well fish for a little bit. And we can bomb up there to the uh, the juicy little brush piles and try to catch a few fish just to make me feel a little bit better about myself. So I think that's the plan. You guys stay tuned. What's up, ducks? How's it going, buddy? What's up, chicken? I already fed you this morning. I gave you food, refilled the uh, the duck pond. You guys have water. Oh, the oh, we need to fix that. The uh, the door got closed. Oh, so buddy's just been locked out. Oh, sorry about that, dude. I've been leaving the uh, the door open at night. We haven't really had any issues. So I've got this electric fence up. The chickens can come and go. The ducks can come and go. And we even put this thing which we found like by the shop as an enclosure for the docks. It's just a good wind block for them. I'm sorry about that, my guy. Oh yeah, it was stuck. There you go. You get back to your, you get back to your friends, okay? You guys keep doing chicken things. Chickens are doing good. Ducks are doing duck things and just relaxing, eating, drinking, swimming, all that fun stuff. We need to go get the fish feed. Woo! We got the fish feed. We're headed back down to the pond. Boom, back at the pond. All right, time to get old dangle dingy in the water. We're gonna try to fill the fish feeder and catch a couple fish to make myself feel better. <laughs> Got her. Slick. She's uh, a little offset, but she'll work. All right, go ahead and get in. All right. Bomb. <laughs> Bombs away, boys. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can get over to the fish feeder here. Perfect. The old sailors not always does it. All right, let's take a look. Shoot. Well, it's not empty. It's just uh, it just the, the hole. yeah, it's missing the hole. That's relatable. All right, we'll fill her back up here. That's it. Boom. All right. Well, she ain't coming off. Perfect. Well, that should last us the rest of the fall, at least you know until till winter. So, all right, let's go catch a fish. <laughs> All right, dangle stick in hand. We're going straight to the juice though, Johnny. We're not messing around, all right? This is juice. This is juice juice bush, okay? Get rid of the old flick of the wrist. Boom. Let's see, am I still cheeks or... Is the fit, did all the fish die in here or what's the strat? We gotta figure that out. Oh, oh. Oh, that's what I'm talking about, boys. <laughs> Got her done dead, boys. Well, there are still bass in here. That's confirmed now. Come on, little junior, open that mouth of yours. Look at that little exo ribbon worm in there. Right in the top of the mouth. That's exactly where you want them. There you go, Ricky. Boom. Well, that makes me feel better about life. There are, in fact, still fish in the pond. They just weren't up shallow on the dam. They've gone a little bit deeper off these main lake points here where the little brush is. Let's try a little bit shallower and see if there's anything on that side. Caught a fish. Didn't didn't win the challenge, but hey, I caught a fish. Well, I wouldn't call that the juice anymore, boys. I, I don't know where the fish are. There's a couple couple deep stumps right about there. Try over here. We'll just kind of float our way back to the bank. Then we get some more fishing time in. And then, like I said, we got John and I. We got big plans later. We got a. Well, that sounded weird, but we got things to do later. Let's just put it that way. Oh, what up, boys? Calling the shots. Calling the shots. So that, those off, off, what do you call them? Offshore, off the point looking timber pile thingies, stumps. Well, that's a skinny little, that's one of the smaller ones we've caught here. That's a junior. That's the other junior. That's a baby. Those are the ones we need to stock in the brew bakery. Oh yeah, there's some, there's some stumps. Uh-oh, uh-oh, yes sir. Get them done, get them done. Dude, they're on the, they're offshore. It's exactly what it is. These offshore uh, stumps is what's holding these fish. Come here, buddy. It's a little better. You can see there's one here, one here, and one here. And I cast pretty much right where you just casted. They are, uh, they're offshore. That's the strat. So when we were fishing the dam earlier, it was not the strat. They've pulled off, they've backed off. I'm guessing maybe the thermocline and the warmer water might be a little bit deeper now. I mean, this is a small pond and like I said, it's been getting cold at night. So they might be in their kind of winter patterns now. All right, Johnny, that's the end of our... Oh, wow. Risky. That was ballsy, Risky. dude. Shoo! 
Well, folks, we made Tooth Farm. We are here at the farm. Look at the farm. It's windy at the farm, and we brought the old warthog. Because, uh, well, we're going to need it today. We are going to go. We got to do something, all right? We got to set up a deer blind. I know you guys are thinking, Flair, you are like two months too late. But you know what? It's never too late. We are going to set up a deer blind. I bought one last year. Never used it. It's a pop-up blind tent. And we are going to try to, well, we're going to try to put it together here uh, before we get out there. Once we put it together, we're going to take it down and then take the old warthog out to the spot and we brought a trail camera too and that way we'll set up a trail camera kind of near it and then as it gets closer to when we want to hunt we'll check out the trail camera and stuff like that anyways you guys get the idea we're just we're getting ready for deer season and we're gonna get the the blind set and we brought a chainsaw so we'll try to brush it in and all that fun stuff so you guys stay tuned minty hopefully this thing has instructions What's up, big boy? What's up, Briggs? Briggs, you haven't been in the vlogs lately. Everybody's been missing you. All right, see you later. Comes with a little carry case? Sheesh. Oh, this is weird. Get in here, look at this. Dude, you can see everywhere. It's <laughs> Dude, it's 360, bro. Blah. Blah. You know what I mean? This is sick. 360. Dude, this makes you want to do some weird things in here. Well, that's not mm. weird, but like. All right, I'm moving. Like, what if what if you sat in here? I don't know. I'm going with this. I'm just saying, like, what if you like sat in here and like baited coyotes or something? You know what I mean? You like, where that. you could just see. Every, it's just weird because like, you can see everywhere, but they can't see you. Wow, that was like really easy. I think we're gonna kill some deer. Probably. Let's put it back in the bag or whatever and head to the spot. You guys remember this spot? This spot had a little bit of water and then a lot of mud and deer tracks. We put corn on the ground, trail cameras. We actually saw some big deer out here. Well, it's all full of water now from all the rain. Like this used to be mud and then there used to be just a little puddle right here and we dumped the corn like here and we were gonna put the tree blind stand thing right there, which is what we're gonna do. Um, but the whole thing is filled with water now, which is not a bad thing because it'll act as a watering hole, just like in Africa, you got watering holes. This is just a natural watering hole right here to where I don't know if the deer are using it still. We did bring a trail camera. We're gonna set one up after we set up the blind, but we figure if you sit in there, at some point, a deer should come down here to get a drink. You would think, cause I mean, it's just straight cornfields all the way around. I mean, there's water down where the flood is, but that's, you know, about a mile, mile and a half away. So anything in this area probably uses this for water. Cause we feel like it would be a solid place to, to hunt deer. I'm not a deer hunter. So if I'm thinking incorrectly here, you guys let me know. But we're gonna start here. We're gonna get the blind set up, brushed in, and uh, set a camera out. And that way we can come check it maybe in a couple weeks and see if there has been anything, if it's worth setting up and seeing what time the deer are here and all that jazz. So anyways, you guys stay tuned. Well, it don't look too bad. I mean, it could use a little bit of brushing, but I mean, it's not bad. We've, we've cut down some limbs here. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could pull some of these up. I mean, these leaves are gonna die probably by the time I even go deer hunting anyway, so it's not really a point of brushing it, other than just to make sure the deer don't see it, but it's pretty tucked away. I mean, the water is way down here. So, you know, if you're a deer and you look back, I feel like that doesn't look too bad. It's all, it's always gonna be in the shade, so I don't think they're paying much, much, much attention to it. We're basically just brushing it up enough to where they won't pay any attention. And we're gonna set out a trail camera, probably right here, facing over here, just so we get an idea of what's here, if there's any bucks and what time they're coming, all that jazz. And then we'll come check it maybe in a couple weeks. And if we see something there, then come out here one morning and try to do a deer catch clean cook. So see you guys in a bit. Shoo! Well, folks, it is the next day. Now you guys may be thinking, well, why is it the next day? What'd you do the rest of the day? <laughs> Nothing. No, we got some stuff done. But what I wanted to do, on kind of on our drive home from the farm, I'm thinking like, John, dude, we should totally stock the pond. This is the perfect time because it's nice and cool outside. It's not hot. It's not super cold. It's cool, which is the time that you want to stock fish early in the spring or in the springtime and then in the fall, which right now is fall. And uh, and so I called my boys at Beamer Fisheries and they said they got the good. So that's where we're at. We're at the fisheries place. You guys have seen me here before. And uh, we're going to go see what they have. If they got bass, bluegills, catfish, crawfish, whatever. This is just gonna be a good time to stock up the old backyard pond. That way the bass have plenty of food to eat and uh, the fish can basically spend all winter growing. 
What were we on? <laughs> we were feeding the we're catfish. Fe feeding a catfish. So we just got here and uh, the owner showed up and he's like, dude, you gotta come, you gotta follow us. We got a catfish, we're about to go hand feed. So I signed me up for hand feeding. So we're gonna follow this truck. And he said he's got some decent catfish for us, decent bluegills, like six inch bass um, that he said like thrived out of their group. So they got good genetics. So we're gonna take some of them and some crawfish, I believe. So just come um, kind of stalker size again, let them kind of thrive throughout the winter and just kind of do their thing. So I guess we're gonna go feed a catfish. This is on trail. This has little skinny roads in between all the ponds. Oh yeah, I saw one flash on it down below. Oh, they'll be. So you gotta, so you have to feed these every day or you just do this for fun? Kind of for fun. Okay. <laughs> Good place to go fishing about right here. Yes, yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, maybe we, I figured they'd come right up here. They usually do. Watch your step here, we'll walk out here. Dude, every single one of these are just boiling with fish right now. Like so you just grow them in this little area. Yeah. Oh, okay, that makes more I sense. I can grow a thousand catfish in these four by eight cages. Wow, I never thought about that. That's actually <clears> really <throat> smart. You just grow them in the cage. Oh yeah. I just saw that. I just saw a giant one. That that was huge. Huge. So how they grow about a pound a year. Yep. There's a big one right there. Yeah. Oh wow. Probably kind of hard for the camera to see. We don't have a polarizer on it, but. This is insane, dude. Me and John are getting some ideas here. I feel like we need to do something like this at my house where we have like a feed pond where we just grow fish. And then once they get big, you put them in the actual pond. I feel like we need to do this. Dude, dude. Are you going to catch one? Me? Yeah. Are you serious? It's what he told me. He told <laughs> Okay. All right, I'll try to catch one. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh God, one just swiped on it. There he's got, there's one he's got now. Oh God, go. oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh no. God, I got one of the big ones. I got one of the big ones. I you. I got one of the big ones, bro. Oh, oh crap. Dude, he's a tank. <laughs> What's going on right now? What the hell? It's a giant one. This is a giant one, dude. <laughs> What's going on right now? Bro, we got the tank, dude. I just came here to pick up some bluegills for the pond. What's going on right now? Dude, you know what's funny? That's the biggest catfish I've ever caught in my entire life. By like a mile. <laughs> oh my god. So what kind of catfish is this? This is regular cat. Just a regular catfish? Yeah. Okay. Like channel? Channel, channel cat. cat. Is it a channel? Really? Yeah, Sheehoo. you better put it. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that was hilarious. Oh my gosh. That's probably up there about the biggest catfish I've ever caught in my entire life. That's, that guy's a beast, dude. There's bigger in there? Oh, really? <laughs> All right, let's go put him back. <laughs> All right, back you go. Thanks for playing, buddy. There he goes. <laughs> what the heck? All right, well, I think it's time to get some big catfish in the pond, John. We need, to, we need to do this. We need to raise some catfish, feed them, train them, and then catch them. All right, John, he's up. Oh, God. That's a big crawfish. I just kind of, I kind of just like held my line tight, and you feel the tick and then the swim, and then I just smoked it. Have you scared them all away? Yeah, I might have scared them by reeling that one in. Oh, no, nope. no, no, I'm getting You definitely bit. got a bite. Yep. Oh. Okay, I got something. Really? Yep. Are right, you ready? Let her eat, Junior. Let her eat. <laughs> oh, that was the real dude. Oh, you still I got him. Oh, you got a bass. Large mouth. What? Oh, rip. Phew. Ripping lips, baby. There you go. See you later, dude. Killed it. Here we are, folks, at 
the backyard pond. And we've got bags and bags and bags and bags and bags and bags full of fish. We've got catfish, I think like 30 catfish. We've got 30 bluegills, 30 red ear sunfish, 20 bass, and I think 50 giant monster lobster crawfish. So these suckers are going in the pond here. And uh, well, you know, those, those bass, maybe two years away from catching. I'm just trying to stack st for the next generation out here, you know, make sure there's good longevity in this pond. So uh, the bluegills actually aren't that bad size. So you could probably catch them with really small baits, maybe even this winter ice fishing. But next summer, you'd probably be able to catch a little bit of them. And then the catfish, really aren't that bad maybe one year maybe one one and a half to two years or so to be able to catch them so and the crawfish are just here for food moral support for the for the fish give catfish give the bass everything else some food for the winter just kind of stocking up hopefully all these fish make babies and just keep doing their thing i guess all right first bag got her opened up these are all the red ears red ear some fish not really super common around here but figured why not put them in there i guess they eat snails and stuff so they're kind of good for your pond go do red ear things Look at them boys. Up next, bass. A little largey action right there. All right, there you go. 20 large mouth in the pond. Little guys, the next generation. All right, look at some, these are actual just normal bluegill. I think 50 of them or something like, 30 of them, 50 of them, something like that. Off we go. Some of those are pretty good size. They're just doing their thing. Next up, we got some catfish. I think this is 50 catfish, or no, I don't know what number it is. Coming in hot. There you go. There's already a bunch of fish food right there they can eat. That they can eat. We got that feeder out there too, so that should go off a few times a day. Hopefully those catfish get used to that. One last bag, craw daddies. All right, crawfish. I'm trying to find the biggest one. Look at that freaking big boy. There you go, bass. Dude, these are giant. In you go. Oh god, look at that. That one's a beefcake right there. Alright. Shoo! I guarantee you they're just gonna start burrowing in this little mud flat here. This is actually probably a really good area for the crawfish to live. It's this unintentional flat muddy area that I made when I was trying to build the boat ramp, but it's shallow and it's muddy. And I feel like the crawfish should just, and it's 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 shallow enough too where I don't know if like bat, I mean bass could get up here, but it'd be, they'd have to really want to get up here. This could be like a little sanctuary for these crawfish just to kind of like do their thing, I guess. The idea is again, give feed to the bass so they can eat them. And also just like, Maybe they, do they, they obviously reproduce, huh? How's that work? Assuming these things will live through the winter and make babies in the spring, then you've got technically free crawfish. That's kind of the idea. A little fall stocking. This is exactly what we did at the brew bakery last year. About this same time of year, we stocked little bluegills. We stocked, I think, some small bass and some catfish. And Grant, which is Kyle's, you know, Kai Dog the Farmer, his nephew, was the one he actually caught some of those catfish this summer which is what it's all about catching the catfish uh catching all the fish that we're stocking so figured get a nice fall stock in and uh let them kind of do their thing this winter but hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode i know it's probably a really long video it started off with fishing then we went to the farm and did deer things and then we ended up catching giant catfish at a fish farm so hope you guys enjoyed today's episode thank you guys so much for watching peace